Hello everyone, in this video we'll have a slight departure from tech, programming and AI news and we're going to talk about Java's new virtual threads. A very quick and simple video where we won't go into too much detail but we'll have a quick intro to virtual threads and we'll create our first few virtual threads in a few different ways. This is just to get you started. If you'd like a more detailed tutorial, just let me know. All right, so virtual threads. Well, in Java, everything is executed in a thread, whether you notice it or not. Java threads were tied to OS threads, mapping one-to-one, -one, and these are called platform threads, okay? Now imagine your app generates a lot of threads and these map to operating system threads. And these threads sit around because they're waiting for things to complete, such as IO operations, for example. Well, naturally, that would be a pretty poor use of resource because you have a limited set of operating system threads available. And now they're sitting around waiting and you can run low on available threads for your application. Now, with the introduction of virtual threads, we can say that there are now essentially two types of threads, ones that map one to one to OS threads as already existed in Java. And these are called platform threads. And now the new ones, which we call virtual threads, which are decoupled from operating system threads. So virtual threads are part of JEP 444. They're part of Project Loom, which has the ongoing aim to improve concurrency. They were finalized, i.e. no longer a preview feature since Java 21 onwards. And there is very little limit on the number of virtual threads that you can use in your app. Now with platform threads and they being coupled to OS threads, uh, it means that you need to manage that in your applications. Virtual threads, on the other hand, are not tied to OS threads and you can program more fluently as a result. The suspension when blocked is handled for you and the underlying threads can be used elsewhere. They're primarily there to provide scale and not speed. Unlike regular threads that are managed by the OS, virtual threads are managed by the JVM, so you get much more efficient scheduling and management. Now, one of the really cool things about virtual threads is that they are designed to work with existing Java interfaces and classes, such as runnable and callable, which means that you have compatibility with existing code. Okay, so let's have a look at some code examples where we'll just create some virtual threads in a few different ways. So first up, we have thread.ofvirtual. I'm just going to comment out all the other approaches. Now with this approach, we call thread.ofvirtual and we can start the thread straight away and it just prints out running thread one and then we call thread.join, which means that we wait for it to complete before this application terminates. So let's just run that and see what happens. Yeah, and you see you get running thread one, which is our output. The thread.join means that we don't miss that output. It comes back to the application. Now with this approach, we are using a builder so you can set a few more options, but we'll look at that in the examples below. So we call thread.ofvirtual.start and we just pass it a lambda of what we want to execute. All right, so let's comment this out and try method two. All right, so with method two, we say start virtual thread, which looks very similar to this. We're kind of creating it and starting it with one method call and we pass it the lambda similar to what we did up here. Okay, now just to show you that the reason why we need thread.join is to wait for this to execute. And if we don't have it, we'd miss the output. So let's just comment those two out and run this and see what happens. As you can see, you don't get any output. Now that's not because this thread didn't execute, but this application terminates before that can execute. So we can say thread.sleep1000, which is the 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. So if we just run that now, and you can see that you get the output. And then shortly after that, this completes. That's just to show you that you don't necessarily need to do join, but we'll run join anyway. And just run that again. And this is the second way of creating your virtual thread. So let's just comment that and that out and jump onto the third way. Now, the third way, if you look at it, it's kind of not that dissimilar to this way that we created here. We say thread.ofvirtual. Now, thread.ofvirtual and then setting the name gives us a builder. And then we can set other options on that builder. So we can say builder dots. Yeah. And then you have some other options that you can set on there. We won't do any of that for now, just to keep it simple. And then we create a runnable lambda of this print statement. Then we say builder.start to start our thread. And then we join it. So we're waiting for it to execute. So let's just run that and see what happens. Yeah, and you can see that that also gets executed. Now, this way is slightly longer, but then you've got more options that you can set. Okay, so let's just comment that out and jump onto our fourth method. Now, in this approach, we are using the executor framework. Now, the executor framework provides a nice separation of thread creation and management from everything else in your application. So we create a new virtual thread per task executor. We submit this Lambda to the executor and we let it deal with it. And then we just get a future back for when that's going to execute. And then we say future.get and then we shut down the executor at the end. Okay, then we get a warning saying this should be run with try with resources, but we won't worry about that for the sake of this tutorial. So let's just run that. Okay, and then you get running thread four. All right, so that wraps up the coding section of this tutorial. We looked at four ways that you can create virtual threads. I would encourage you to experiment further, but let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. 
Now, one thing to note is that virtual threads are best for running tasks that are likely to spend time being blocked, waiting for things like IO. They're not intended for long running CPU intensive tasks. All right, so that wraps up this super simple practical intro to creating our first virtual threads. Let me know if you want more info in the comments below. If you found it useful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up icon. And more importantly, if you don't want to be the last to know about important tech, industry, AI and programming news, make sure to hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.